You didn't ask for it, but here it is. Japanese washi tape haul in challenge. Now I have made a couple of art videos where I've incorporated washi tape into my watercolor illustrations, but when I saw the huge selection of washi tape here in Japan, I couldn't help but think, what if I made illustrations with 100% only washi tape. Let's do a mini washi tape haul and then get into creating art 100% only using washi tape. So starting off with our basic colors of washi tape, we do have two sets, one in some dark earthy tones and our other set in more pastel, bright, fun colors. Each of these sets is 1,300 yen, which is about $11 US dollars. So that is just over a dollar for each of these washi tape rolls. And I don't know about where you guys are from, but washi tape in Canada is $5 a pack. Now that is probably more for the, I guess, the really cute pattern ones, which we will move on to. So these are the patterns I chose from the shop. Now there are many, many, many more patterns to choose from, but I thought I would stick to a theme of colors, warm colors, cool colors, fun shapes, and just overall something that can add a nice pop of pattern to our illustration. These are about, I think it was 280 yen a pop, so maybe $2.50 each. Again, very cheap for washi tape. So when I saw these, I knew I had to do a challenge using them and I'm excited. These are very cute, colorful patterns that you do not find in Canada. Oh, and I guess I also got a single white roll because the packs didn't come with one. And even though I can use the white of my page, I'm trying to be true to the challenge. So white washi tape. This is the last of the actual washi tape I got. When I saw these, I couldn't help but think how cool these would be to make trees or bushes. They are two different greens with a lot of fun texture. And there's these nice little spots of shininess to them that I just, fell in love with, so these would be really fun to play around with. These, again, a dollar more than the regular patterned ones, but these would probably be $5 each in Canada, which is ridiculous. Moving on to trinkets and accessories for the washi tape, I thought I would try out this washi tape cutter just because I was curious to see how it works. Could I use scissors? Yes. But while in Japan, try the washi tape cutters? This contraption is called the Kadu Cut. Very tiny, very cute. And all you do is clip it onto your washi tape like so. You pull out whatever washi tape you want and, ooh, that, that was actually really easy. The only problem is this will run you 380 yen, which is about $3.50 US. Moving on to our next contraption, we have the Animal Hug Washi Tape Dispenser. So let's check this guy out. These little guys are basically the same as the previous dispenser, but cuter. So what you do is you take your washi tape, take your little guy, wrap the arms around, struggle, struggle some more. You have to suffer for the cuteness. Ha, I did it. So there he is hanging on to our washi tape. Oh my goodness. And now we've got our tape. Thanks for letting me use your butt, cat. And our final washi tape accessory, storage, because I bought too much washi tape. Let's check it out. Here we are. Let's give it an open. Doo -doo. Wow. Let's fill it up. And there you go. There is all of our washi tape conveniently stored in this adorable, I love little brown containers, so I'm a sucker for this. But now everything's nice and organized. Love it. All right. What do you guys say we start sketching and come up with some washi tape art? But before we get into anything too crazy, I thought it would be best to start off with some easier things before we jump into a background. Maybe my original character Hatch, of course, 
It's been a hot minute since I've messed around with washi tape, so I feel like I probably also have to get warmed up a little bit. So hopefully Hatch can help, and then I'll be ready to tackle something crazy. Oh, I forgot. Hatch has a tail. Okay, let's give Hatch his tail, and that should be simple enough to get warmed up for a character. We do have to have one fruit on the ground that has been smashed, or I guess dropped, and is now dead. Okay, I think that's really cute. Oh, should I make it ice cream? No, that's fine. Okay, so I do think this is going to be simple and fun to start off and get warmed up. Oh, once again, past Casey is so naive. I called that a simple drawing, which honestly, yes, that is a simple drawing, but for what I was doing, which was creating it out of tape, that's not, it's not simple, nor is it an easy process, I learned. So when actually sketching this piece onto paper, I accidentally simplified it and made it a little stiffer than the actual sketch, which kind of bummed me out. But honestly, it worked really well because creating art from washi tape is very tedious and time consuming and I'm pretty happy that I accidentally made it a little more simple than I meant to because oh geez I needed that. So the overall process of coloring a piece of art with washi tape isn't super hard. I think the hardest part is the fact that the washi tape isn't 100% opaque, so you could absolutely see even my lightened pencil marks underneath the tape, which didn't really bother me. I super like to embrace handmade art and the fact that it's imperfect and that you can see mistakes and pencil marks and stuff. It just makes it more personal and handmade looked and feel Feeling, but at the same time, you need those guidelines to be able to cut something into a certain shape. I guess I could have freehanded things, but I feel more comfortable if I have a guide like a pencil sketch. So that's definitely something that I had to embrace or get over was that I was able to see the pencil marks underneath, which like I said, I was able to get over pretty quickly. Another thing that's very difficult with washi tape art is that if you want to create small details or just mini fine details. It's a long process and I think it requires quite a bit of patience. I didn't bring my small scissors to Japan so I was having to use quite large scissors to cut tiny pieces of tape and then the tape was also sticking to the scissors. Not to mention for whatever reason I thought it was best to bring my really old crappy scissors so they are super dull. Probably should have bought some more and this was also my first piece that I did 100% out of washi tape so I also had to learn some trial and error ways to work with the tape so layering things what was the best way to layer definitely should have saved the smaller details for last so the stitching on hatch should have went on last because once I put the patterned background over the entire thing it was picking up those pieces so layering and removing pieces is definitely something that you have to consider when working with washi tape and this was definitely a learning process piece for me. Though I really love the way that the colorful patterned washi tape just added a lot to this illustration even though it was literally just a circle behind Hatch. It just created so much fun colors and patterns and I even cut out those little strips of color to create the sprinkles on the ice cream which I thought was just a really fun detail to include into another part of the illustration. So during this trial first piece, I learned that layering the washi tape was a lot of fun. The fact that it wasn't 100% opaque was actually something that I wanted to play around with. For this first practice piece, I was avoiding overlapping layers and making sure that I cut every piece and made sure you couldn't see other pieces behind it. But once it came to the ice cream on the ground, I just loved the way it layered and I had to embrace it there. So I started to think about simple shapes that overlapped or just fun ways that you could see through the tape. And that's something that I wanted to continue playing with with our next piece. But for now, here is our hatch test, which I think turned out super cute and super fun. I also do want to get warmed up with a simple background. So maybe something with bushes in the foreground, 
we could have trees in the background. Maybe like a little hill. I feel like something needs to be here. Like some sort of creature or something. Maybe it could just be some weird blobby creature. Let's let's just doodle something. Let's see. He's got legs. We could definitely use the cute decorated washi tape for a picnic sort of blanket. And maybe he has... Um, he's got a little worm friend with him. And he's eating the apple. <laughs> cute. So, confession, I definitely sketched the second piece immediately after the hatch sketch, which meant I wasn't aware of how hard it was to actually work with the washi tape. So going into the second piece, I made a few changes to the original sketch because I knew I was going to want to simplify the illustration, but also I knew that I wanted to play around with the layering of the washi tape. So I started to think more about the way different parts of the illustration would interact and at first I wanted the entirety of the mountains in the background to layer through the ground or the hill. I also thought it would be really cute if the mountains in the background had a quilted shape sort of like farmland sort of looks quilted if that makes sense. Either way it was a really fun pattern to put in the background for a hill and I really like it. So when it came to the layering of this piece, like I said, I wanted to embrace the fact that you could see through the washi tape. So with our worm guy, I didn't cut around the mountain to make sure you couldn't see it behind our worm. I wanted to embrace the fact that you might be able to see it. Same goes for the ground. Once I put the worm under the grass, you could still see him through the grass, which obviously isn't something that happens in real life. But because we're playing with a material that lets you see through it, I thought it would be really fun and interesting to have that as a part of this illustration. Unfortunately, I don't think this was the best illustration to play around with transparency because our other tapes weren't very transparent. When it came to the bushes, the very sparkly and textured greens, I think for them to get that much texture and especially to get the shiny parts of the washi tape, they had to make it very opaque. So I wasn't able to get the same fun layering that I was able to get with the worm and the grass, which was okay. I still had a lot of fun playing around with what transparency we were able to achieve with the worm. I love the textures of the mountains in the background. You can also see the cloud behind the worm's head and also just having a full background where there are aspects with a foreground, a midground, and a background is something that I wanted to try out with washi tape. So in that aspect I was able to play around with washi tape and see what works in a background way and at this point I think I was ready to tackle a larger full background illustration using washi tape and I was starting to get some more ideas on how to use the washi tape. So let's get into it. I'm actually kind of excited to do something related to water because I think we would get some really cute effects with seeing fish under the water or maybe a mermaid or a shark or something. So I'm going to start brainstorming ideas for a really cute illustration where we have the sky on top. Something I have been wanting to play around with is somehow trying to play around with a gradient sky. I think it would look nice if we had a red sky that went down from orange and then into yellow and then we had our nice sun and clouds around. I'm not really sure how I would do a gradient. I'm thinking just do a lot of slices with my X-Acto knife and then randomly peeling away pieces of tape. Maybe that would look cool. I think maybe it might just be cool to have a rock and some sort of creature. Let's see. Actually, we should probably uncenter our background here. We could have that more to the side. I really want to try to push the fact that this is a 3D world, so I'm going to have some fish in front of the rock, and then, as I've shown here, some fish behind the rock. I kind of just want to make a cat stranded on the ocean, just looking sad and lonely. Wondering how it even got there to begin with. 
because I think my focus of this entire illustration anyways is going to be the background and the layers and really exploring that aspect of this art. All of that being said, if our last sketches were any indication of how this is going to be, I'm probably going to stray a lot from the original sketch. Though I really do like all the little details here under the ocean I have and then maybe something a little more restful for the eyes at the top and just a really cute simple character that you wonder how they got in that situation. Heck, maybe we can even give it a fish flopping about because it's about to eat dinner. Who knows? That's pretty cute. I think I really like this idea, so let's get started. When it came to penciling this piece, I didn't do a whole lot of penciling because I knew that I was going to embrace the transparency of the materials. And like I mentioned, you could see the pencil marks through the tape. So even though the pencil marks didn't bother me too, too much, I didn't want there to be a lot of pencil marks. So that being said, I didn't pencil a whole lot because I didn't want there to be a lot of pencil marks to worry about. But also this piece was kind of something that I was going to be winging for the most part. It seemed like like it wasn't super structured in the sense that I needed to know where things went. For the most part, we had a very simple background, a very simple main character, and very simple details that I was just going to be throwing on randomly anyways. So not something that I needed to sketch a bunch of little fish in the sea. Definitely something that I was just gonna be throwing on. So starting off with the sky because, well, first off, I was very excited to do the sky, but also I wanted to work my way from the top to bottom because I knew that's the way that this tape was going to be layered. So the sky actually turned out exactly how I had hoped and I was actually really surprised that it turned out so easily and so well. Like I mentioned, I just did a bunch of cuts with my X-Acto knife and peeled away randomly and it created this really nice gradient with the tape that honestly mimics the way I create gradients with watercolor, which I found very interesting and I really like the way it looks. And because I know there's probably going to be a lot of questions about how you cut washi tape without cutting through the paper, basically I'm using watercolor paper so the paper itself is very thick and hard to cut through to begin with, so I'm not worried about cutting through my paper. But if you're wondering how you cut through one layer of washi tape and not the other layers of washi tape, for the most part I am pretty much cutting through every layer of washi tape when I make a cut, but I just only peel away the layer that I want to peel away. You can also just cut lightly because washi tape is very thin so if you don't press down too hard you should be able to cut only through one layer of washi tape but that's not something I'm super concerned about so I normally just kind of go for it when I cut. Moving on to our ocean, I, like I said, ended up making some changes to our original idea and I added an octopus. I just thought that we needed some more fish down there that weren't just regular generic fish. And I also thought it would be really cute to have this octopus reaching up through the ocean and handing the fish to our cat. I also just really wanted to make sure that there was some other warm colors like the orange and the red throughout the entire illustration. And so far the ocean was looking very dull when it came to color, so I thought it definitely needed that. And I think he ended up being a very cute addition, so good job Mr. Octopus. Other than that, it was basically just throwing a bunch of details like different kinds of fish, starfish. I decided to add seaweed because again I thought it needed some extra color in there like green but also I just wanted to add as much detail at the bottom of the ocean as I could because I knew that the top of our illustration was going to be a little bit more on the simple side. That being said once I added our layer of blue on top of everything it didn't quite give me the effect I was hoping for but on the other hand it turned out really nicely anyway so I'm not super upset about it. I do really like simple art, so I'm not concerned that a lot of the details were lost when I put the blue sheets over our fish. But I do think that I probably should have kept it a little bit more simple because it is so complex and the blue tape really sort of doesn't muddy it, but it really makes everything kind of one piece because it's all one color. So it, it makes it really hard to see all the details that are happening. That being said, it does make it a little bit more simple on the eyes. So I don't know. I, I like how simple it is, but it's sad that I put so much detail into all those fish only for it to be lost. 
After adding the water, I added some white for some sea foam and some darker blue to suggest waves. And I think that really brought it together. And especially with the foreground, it really helped show that those fish were under the water and that the sea foam was on top of the water. So I think it just really helped with the illusion of layering things and creating a suggestion of a 3D space, which worked out super nice. Overall, I'm really happy with the way this piece turned out and this actually just makes me want to play around with tissue paper art in the future, so definitely something to think about. Would I do washi tape again? I think it might be a little more trouble than it's worth, but I did have fun with these, so there you go. That is that for our washi tape only challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay golden. But first, a huge thank you to all of my patrons for all of their support. You guys are amazing. Do you want coloring pages, early access to my videos and more? Check out my Patreon link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye.